my way back. Don't you know that I'm down on my bended? Lord, I'm begging you to save this soul of my Lord, I'm begging you, please forgive me, Jesus, Lord, and try me, Lord, and I have sinned against you. Don't you know that I admit that I've done wrong? Don't you know that? Just like the prodigal son, Lord, and I'm on my way back home. Don't you know that I'm down on my bended? Lord, I'm begging you to save this soul of my Lord, I'm begging you, please forgive me, Jesus, Lord, and try me one more time. Well, when I went astray from you, Jesus, Lord, I thought I was having fun. Oh, I came back. Oh, to myself, Lord, but now I'm on the run. Lord, just make me one of thy servants. Lord, I'm not worthy to be your child. And so, please, you know, church, if you know what I'm talking about, get on your feet, church, and try me. Lord, and I have sinned against you. Don't you know that I admit that I have done wrong? Don't you know that I'm just like the prodigal son? Lord, and I'm on my way back. Don't you know that I'm down on my bended? Lord, I'm begging you to say this all on my Lord, I'm begging you, please forgive me, Jesus, Lord, and try me well. And it's good to have a Savior, Lord, who forgives us of all of our sin. Lord, it's good to know that you love me, Lord, now over and over again. Everybody knows the sin, Lord, is so human. Lord, to forgive is so divine. Lord, I'm begging you, please forgive me, Lord, and try me. Lord, and I have sinned against you. Don't you know that I admit that I have done wrong? Don't you know that I'm just like the prodigal son? Lord, and I'm on my way back. Lord, I'm begging you to save this all of my Lord, I'm begging you, please. You know, church, it's good to have a safe hand. Try me with a hand. It's good to have a Savior. Lord, forgive us of all my sins. It's good to know that you love me. Lord, over and over again. Lord, and I'm on my way I really do appreciate everyone singing out on that song. It is wonderful to know that we have a God that loves us. A God that not only loves us, but he demands love from us toward him also. It's not just on a one-way street. It's a two-way street. I want to take this uh, time and just uh, warmly say to all of our mothers that it is our prayer that not just on this day, it is our prayer that you are appreciated. 
for all that you do. And, and I especially want to uh, lift up Christian mothers. Because I believe Christian mothers are the ones who set the kingdom in motion because of their love and guidance. It's what you do with your young person and how you teach them in the Lord that really, really strengthens our kingdom for the future. You know, I was thinking about this message today, and I want to talk about what a praying mother does and all the awesome things that is a result of her just simply praying. And before I get to that, that message and that point, I can't help but to imagine or rather uh, reflect upon my mother, and she has uh, gone to be with the Lord and uh, it's been, oh, 10, 11 years since her passing, and I can't help but to uh, just recall some of the things that, in my opinion, made her so special. And I don't know about your mother, but there was a time or two my mother had to step in and save my behind. Anybody have a mother had to, had to save your behind? I don't know what I did exactly, but there was a big old girl in my neighborhood that somehow or another she got to chasing me, and you know I was about the fastest thing in the neighborhood, and she couldn't catch me, and on her way trying to catch me, I dodged some, uh, a, a tricycle, and she was not so lucky. And so she hit those tricycle and fell, and she just made this last word, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> and I was going down to the store, and uh, I don't know the girl's name, but she come running down a hill. Now, mind you, I'm the fastest thing in the neighborhood, and I just froze right there. I, I couldn't move. And she was coming my way. I'm talking about all 300-some-odd pounds of her coming my way. And I just said, well, you know, I guess I'm going to have to die today. And I heard a voice from on the hill say this. Don't you lay a hand on my baby. And that girl froze as if she turned into a pillar of salt. And I said, you know, there is a God. <laughs> so I appreciate my mother and how she protected me. I can't help but tell you this one more story about my appreciation for uh, mothers. Uh, I was uh, getting a few things for uh, Colleen, getting her, you know, getting a few things that uh, make her, her day special uh, this morning, and, uh, and the boys of I did a real good job uh, this morning. I just want you to know that. And uh, so I was driving, and I noticed, you know, there are some uh, the motorcycles that are like, you know, with the two wheels in front and one wheel in the back. Y'all seen that riding around, riding around? I think they call them spiders or something like that. So I saw this spider go whizzing by, and I said, wow, you know, that's kind of interesting. But then I took a closer look and I said, you know, that's a grandmother riding that spider. <laughs> and so, you know, I pulled up next to her. It was at a red light. Because I wanted to see Granny on this spider. So, I, you know, I looked at Granny, and Granny had a clear visor with some dark sunglasses. She looked at me on her motorcycle. She looked at me like this, y'all. And she did this. And so I did, what's up? And then Granny spared off, and I said, boy, this is a different generation right here. Granny owns spiders, I said, God bless her, God bless her, I can't take that. That was too much for me to handle right there. We live in an age where generations may change, and we have grannies uh, who are really cool now, but I'm here to tell you, I wouldn't trade anything for a mother that prayed. A mother that prays can do so many things. And today I want to encourage you that we all need to encourage our mothers today. We all need to encourage the community of mothers, especially at Inner City. Because if our church is going to be anything that God wants us to be, we must have praying mamas up in this church. We're going to have to have you and we have to have every man encouraging mothers to be a praying mother. That's critical. That's important. And I want to get to some points here to help you to appreciate how important it is for our mothers to pray. Point number one is this. A praying mother continues to increase 
in their faith. A praying mother continues to increase in her faith. You have to understand that. Let me give you a scripture to help you to appreciate this. Luke chapter 17, verses 3 uh, through 6 says this. Jesus says, so be careful. If your brother or sister in God's family does something wrong, warn them. If they are sorry for what they did, forgive them. Now listen. And if they do something wrong to you seven times in one day, but they say they are sorry each time, listen, you should forgive them. The apostle said to the Lord, give us more faith. That's interesting. I need to have more faith. Notice the Lord's response to the request to have more faith. His response is, if your faith is as big as a mustard seed, that's, that's, that's important. They're asking for something big, give them more. And our Savior is saying, listen, if you have faith as big as a mustard seed, a mustard seed is a very small seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, dig yourself up and plant yourself in the ocean, and the tree will obey you. Here's the point I want you to understand, mothers, and what we need to encourage our mothers to do. Listen, it is not the point for you to have overwhelming faith. You know where overwhelming faith resides in? Overwhelming faith resides in your simple obedience to God. Y'all didn't catch that. You didn't catch that. When you choose to obey God, God can do all things through you. See, you don't have to have some kind of, you know, you know some people try to talk their way into faith. They, they get to you and you can't even have a conversation without them saying praise God 12 times. What God desires is your praise, but God desires your obedience that you do what he tells you to do. And when you choose to be obedient to him, just what the scripture says, you can do great things through your obedience to him. Some of us are asking God to do great things, but we are refusing to obey God. But when you find yourself in obediency to God, then God can truly use you. God can move a mountain. God can move a mulberry tree. God can do all things through you if you're just obedient. And so instead of us thinking that our faith has to be so big, I want you to just boil it down to simply obedience. That I'm going to obey God today. I'm going to do what his word says I'm going to please God today. And don't spend all your time trying to talk up your faith. Be obedient to what God has required to you to do. To increase faith really means to increase your obedience. Amen? Consider point number two. <clears throat> a, a praying mother continues to teach that God is always near. Now that's important. In our day and age, this is a significant word, okay? In our day and age, we have come upon a generation where our young people do not understand, do not comprehend that God is always near. We have categorized God. We check into God's time and we check out. That is not the God that we serve. Listen, I'm going to read from the uh, easy to read. It says, Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our protection and source of strength. He is always ready to what? Ready to help us in times of trouble. Now, I like this translation for many, many reasons, but I'm not particularly fond of the way the translators handle this particular verse. I'm going to show you the amplified version. I'm going to take notice of a more literal translation. It goes like this. God is our refuge and strength. In other words, he is mighty, uh, impenetrable uh, to temptation. You see, he is a very present and well-proved help in trouble. So, so what does that mean? That means everything. You and I have to understand it doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter where you go. God is there. 
that God is able to help you. When you're in trouble, you're never alone because God is present. The key in understanding when you're in trouble is allowing God to help you through the trouble. Don't get upset that you're in trouble. Understand that there's a God with you when you're in trouble. You and I have to appreciate a few things about the God that we serve, that he is real. See, this type of mother who prays understands that not only is he near, but he is real. So, mother, some of the things that we have to do for our children that will really, really help them in the kingdom of God is that you must sit down with them. Do not send them to their room to pray but you get on your knees with them and pray. Why? Because the first step of understanding that God is real is when the parents demonstrate that my conversation with God is a real conversation. That I talk to God like I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to God not like I'm talking to the ceiling, not like I'm trying to sing a song, but I'm talking to a real being. When you teach your child how to talk to God, then that child stops acting like, well, I didn't know. Well, I didn't feel like doing it. Listen, Satan has fooled this generation to think all that you need to do is take yourself to church, get your holiness on for 45 minutes, maybe an hour. But when you leave church, guess what? Leave God in church. And come on out here and have some real fun. And we got to understand there is no secret place for the child of God. There is no secret place for anybody. For anyone to think that you can actually do wrong and God not see is an ignorant person. That you do not understand that the God that resides all places knows where you are. And that mother, when you pray, help your child to understand that that conversation has to be authentic. Do not have your child just rope through a prayer, God is good. In Jesus' name, I'm going to bed now. That doesn't work, but you need to express yourself, confess your sins, acknowledge that God is God all by himself. Learn to do that on a daily basis because when you do that, your child will begin to understand that I am dealing with a real being. Sometimes children get a little smart sometimes. Thank God they get a little smart because see, every time a child gets smart, you need to have an apologetic response. Sometimes a, a child may come to you and say, I don't know whether or not God is real. A good mother needs to say, is your brain working today? Where did you come with, I don't know whether or not God is real. I cannot see him. You need to learn to say, you cannot see God? Can you see the sun? Yes, I can see the sun. Very good, you can see. How do you think the sun got up there? And you need to be able to say, you need to break him down or break her down. Do you think the sun got up there by accident? Do you think there was a big boom? An order came out of chaos? Or do you believe that a designer placed the sun up there that you might gaze upon the sun and realize that it rises and it falls and it continues to do that in order? Why? That you might contemplate that there is a designer and the designer is the almighty God. So you cannot tell me that God is not real. Allow me to consider one more thing. Have you considered the very body that you have? Look at your body. Tell you how real God is. Do you think, boom, your body came here by accident? 
you really derived from a monkey. And the monkey got here by accident too. Do you really have your child look at his body and ask itself, am I fearfully and wonderfully made? Did I get here? Did these fingers get here by accident? Or was there someone who designed these fingers? Someone who designed this nose? Someone who designed my knees? And one will discover that there is a present God. He is the designer of all things. And let us appreciate that the God that we serve is very close to us. He is near and wanting us to acknowledge his presence. Point number three. A praying mother continues to unload all her burdens into the hands of God. Now that's important, church. So many times, mamas, you carry burdens. You carry burdens. And I think this is far more challenging for a mother than maybe for men. Because when a mama carries a burden, the whole house knows it. There's a smile that she used to have that she doesn't have. I want to share with you three scriptures to help you to appreciate that a praying mother continues to unload all her burdens into the hands of God. John 16, 33 says this, I have told you these things so that you can have peace in me. In this world you will have troubles, but be brave. I have defeated the world, says our Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Give all your worries to him because he cares for you. Can I get an amen? amen? He didn't say give a few of them. Mama, we got to learn to give all your worries to God. It don't matter what the problem might be. It doesn't matter how many times you have to go to him. You got to go to him enough until you trust that he is handling your problem. And you cannot be afraid of the results of God and what he might give you. The key to your relationship with God is to trust him. You cannot be afraid with the results that he might give you. But trust in him knowing that he'll work all things out for those who love him. Philippians 4, verse 6 says this, don't worry about anything. Isn't that hard to do? Isn't that hard to do? But it's scripture. Scripture says, don't worry about anything. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. It's right there in scripture. Well, how do I do it? How do I not worry about everything? You've got to get on your knees and pray. That's how you not worry. It says, but pray and ask God for how much? For everything you need. Everything. Y'all not hearing me today. Y'all not hearing me today. When you ask God for everything, that is the way you give him everything. You got to say, God, I don't know what to do with this child anymore. Can you help me? I don't know what my tomorrow might bring. Can you strengthen me? I don't know how I'm going to get to work tomorrow. Can you give me an answer? And it says this, always giving thanks for what you have. Now the key to not worrying, if you want to know, is you get on your knees and you ask God for everything that you need. But you got to also do something. You got to be able to appreciate what God has already done for you. Are you hearing me? If you're not going to worry, you got to understand that God has been good to you. That God has given you another day. That God has given you a meal to eat. That God is bringing troops your way. If you just hold on, if you just give God a chance to show up, so many times 
We worry because we simply think that God will not show up. I'm here to tell you that in the 44 years I have been living, I know a God who has shown up each and every time. They say he may not come when you want him, but he's what? He's right on time. So if you stop worrying and get on your knees and pray to God, mama, pray for that child. I understand he's incarcerated. Don't give up on him. As long as he has breath in his body, God is not through with him yet. I understand that that girl may be running you crazy, but give her some time. Help her to understand that you love her and that she must continue a relationship that you taught her when she was nothing more than five years old and you taught her the Lord's Prayer. Because those who've been taught in the Lord will come back. They will come back. That's word. That's word. That's word. Listen. Mamas, you're so good to us. Mamas, your relationship with God means absolutely everything. Because so many times, the child begins to understand what love is first from mama. First from mama. And when they begin to understand that, they need to discover that all of mama's love and all of mama's strength derives from God Almighty. And when they understand that, they will begin to develop their own faith in Christ Jesus and will no longer depend on yours. I want to encourage anyone here today, if you don't know Jesus, today is a day of salvation. We want you to come into a relationship with an everlasting God who has an everlasting love for you. If you're prepared to say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and if you're willing to repent of your sins, then you're well on your way. If you're willing to be baptized, baptized into Christ Jesus today, to be immersed in a watery grave, to come up anew, there, not only will you receive forgiveness, but God will begin a wonderful, working, redemptive relationship with you. I might be talking to a mother today, and you're simply broken. You're trying to smile, but early today you was crying. Maybe the child didn't wish you a happy Mother's Day today. And maybe in turn, you need to be praying for that child today. For whatever reason, that God might be calling you to our shepherds. I want to encourage you, mother, don't you walk through those doors with Satan having the victory over your life. I may be.